Hi, I'm Daisha Seifer, and I'm going to demonstrate how to compute a simple linear regression model using SPSS. As you can see, I have the data set called Exercise 29, Example 1 on the screen. I have two variables in this particular example because it is simple linear regression instead of multiple linear regression. Simple linear regression means that there is only one predictor in the model. These data were collected from students enrolled in a, an RN to BSN program. It is a small simulated data set from a much, much larger data set. As I've said before, I like to keep uh, these examples small because in the textbook you're also computing the data by hand. And um, in this example, you're computing the beta and the y-intercept by hand. So I kept it to 20 to keep those hand calculations manageable. The predictor uh, for this example is the number of degrees that the student had at enrollment. And the dependent variable is the uh, number of months it took for the student to, pro to progress to graduation. The null hypothesis is, is that the number of degrees at enrollment does not predict months to completion. So let's test the hypothesis and see what we get. We're going to go to Analyze, Regression, and Linear. Your predictor is moved over to the independent area, number of degrees, and the dependent variable is months to completion. From there, let's click OK. So the first table of output that we have is the model summary table. And the first column here is called the multiple R, which is actually a Pearson R. It's a Pearson R between the actual Y values and the predicted Y values using the new, equa new equation that was generated. Uh, so it's the actual Y, which is the actual months of completion, correlated with the predicted number of months to completion using the new equation. The next uh, column over is the R squared. That's simply this value squared, so 0 0.638 squared, which, which is 0 0.407. Now this is the only number in this output that can be referred to as a percentage. So the R square is interpreted as 40.7% of the variance in months to completion can be explained by knowing the number of degrees the student had at enrollment. Next to that is the adjusted R squared, 0.374. The adjusted R squared is always going to be a little smaller uh, than the, the original R squared. Uh, in a simple linear regression model, when there's only one predictor, this adjustment is reflecting the small sample size here. This um, n of 20 uh, is, might, might be difficult to generalize to other samples, and, uh, and so it is adjusted accordingly. And then the next uh, table is the ANOVA table, uh, simply testing uh, whether or not um, having this, knowing this predictor uh, value of number of degrees will uh, predict why, and that uh, association is significant at 0.002. It's a little redundant with the next table that we have, so we'll move down to the last table. This is a very important table uh, for uh, our linear regression. The very first column that we have is the new regression equation that I referenced earlier. Uh, the unstandardized beta of negative 2.9 and the y-intercept, which is 16.25. If we were to write this out on a page, it would look like predicted y equals negative 2.9 times x plus 16.25. As I said earlier, uh, this top row is the y-intercept. SPSS calls it the constant. But what this means is that when um, x is 0, y is 16.25. And if plotted geometrically, that line of, um, that slope of the line would cross the y-intercept at 
positive 16.25. But practically, it also means that um, when using this equation, if you enter zero as x, meaning if the student entered with zero degrees at enrollment, that student would, on average, complete the program in 16.25 months. Um, continuing on with that idea, if the student entered with one degree at enrollment, then you would plug the one into uh, the regression equation as x. So y equals negative 2.9 times 1 plus 16.25, and that would equal 13.35. So if the student entered the program with one degree on average, they would complete the program in 13.35 months. So you see how that regression equation would work. Moving over to another very important piece of this output is the standardized beta. St the standardized beta is interpreted as a Pearson R is interpreted. It has the same limits of negative 1.0 to positive 1.0, where a zero is indicative of no association between the two variables. Uh, this particular beta in absolute value is um, quite high. As you recall from the effect size tables and exercises 24 and 25, any value uh, higher than 0.5 uh, the, for a Pearson R is considered uh, a, a large effect, and this is no exception. Um, another uh, noteworthy component of this output is that this beta is negative, meaning there is an inverse association between number of degrees and months to completion, meaning that the more degrees the students had when they enrolled, the less time it took for them to complete the program. Now this beta is converted into a T value, which is uh, tested for significance, and we can generate the exact P, which is 0 0.002. Generally in nursing research, we're going to set our study alpha at 0.05. This is, of course, less than 0.05, meaning that we do have a, a significant result. So how do, we, how do we write this interpretation of everything that we've seen in APA format? We go to the interpretation. Simple linear regression was performed with number of degrees as the predictor and months to completion as the dependent variable. The number of degrees significantly predicted months to completion. Uh, standardized beta equals negative 0.638, p equals 0 0.002, R squared equals 40.7%. Higher numbers of degrees significantly predicted shorter program completion time. So this is what an interpretation might look like if you wanted to adhere to APA format. Um, note that the language in this interpretation is not causal. So you see words uh, like predicted, you might see uh, the word association in a regression interpretation, but we avoid cause and effect kinds of language because this is an associational design. Uh, and so we have to be really careful in regression to indicate that one thing causes another thing when the design um, can't yield that kind of information. So we're careful about that just as we would with a Pearson R. Thank you for watching.